test. Hello, good evening, everyone. May I have your attention? Hello, good evening. So uh, we represent the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment. We will be uh, presenting uh, uh, our uh, role in the leadership in the environment uh, with our high board members and uh, senior advisors uh, in two minutes. So if you may, uh, please be seated if you are interested in the session. We would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And you're so welcome in our presentation. We will start in two minutes. Thank you. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Just, you know, I, I, I'll come yeah, right back. Thank, thank you so much. Please come to the front. Please, you're welcome. Hello. Hello. Sarafuna. Please come to the front if you may. Okay. Yes. Should be. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good to start. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Two minutes. Just waiting for the people okay. to. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Do you like to be in our session? Uh, yeah, I will. Please. Call if I go in first. Christine, help me get the people. Salaam alaikum. Good heart. So, into me, Munadimin, or will I invite you to join our session? We will, we will, inshallah. Yes, please. Tadal Imani. We will start in one minute. Yeah, of course, we will send them out. Uh, okay.
Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello, everyone. Uh, we hope you're having a good evening and welcome to the session of the role of leadership uh, at the Zayed International Foundation for the Environment. Founded in 1999 by the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister, and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, uh, the Zayed International Prize for the Environment is meant to recognize and encourage environmental achievements supporting and promoting the the implementation of Agenda 21, if anyone remembers the Agenda 21 since that time. Uh, the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs, and the Johannesburg Plan of Im Implementation of Sustainable Development in line with the vision and philosophy of the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. We are promoting, um, we are acknowledging the efforts in the environment by the, the Zayed International Prize for the Environment, as well as the Emirates Appreciation Award that you will discover by our uh, dear senior advisors and board members that they will be speaking about. Um, the pre prestigious award of uh, this foundation is worth $1 million, but the scope is not limited to prize awards. The foundation endo endeavors to promote sustainable development through various environmental initiatives and through propagating environmental awareness, addressing sustainability issues, conducting international and regional conferences, workshops and seminars, raising consciousness among the public, professionals, trade and the fraternity. In addition to publications and community activities, without due, uh, without further ado, I will uh, present Dr. Hamdan, uh, board member of the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment. Thank you. Thank you تعد القيادة من أهم المفاهيم التي تحظى باهتمام كبير في المجتمعات فهي أساس استقرار المجتمعات وتقدمها قد كان القيادة في فكر الشيخ زايد بن سلطان آل نهيان رحمه الله مؤسس دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة أهمية خاصة حيث جلستت حياته وإنجازاته أروع صور القيادي الناجح يعد الشيخ زايد بن سلطان نهيان رحمه الله أبرز القادة البيئيين في العالم فقد كانت لديه رؤية واضحة لأهمية حماية البيئة وقد عمل على تحقيق هذه الرؤية من خلال مجموعة من السياسات والمبادرات والمشاريع التي أثرت بشكل كبير على البيئة في دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة والمنطقة العربية والعالم أجمع كان الشيخ زايد رحمه الله يؤمن بأن حماية البيئة هي مسؤولية مشتركة بين الأفراد والحكومات وقد حرص على نشر الوعي البيئي بين أفراد المجتمع وإنشاء مؤسسات التشريعية والتعليمية والبحثية التي تعنى بالبيئة كما حرص على أن تكون الحكومة الإماراتية سباقة في مجال حماية البيئة من أبرز مبادرات الشيخ زايد رحمه الله في حماية البيئة تأسيس العديد من الهيئات الحكومية والمؤسسات التي تعنى بقضايا البيئة والاستدامة إضافة إلى إنشاء العديد من المحيات الطبيعية في دولة الإمارات <تصفيق> بما في ذلك محمية دبي الصحراوية ومحمية حفيد ومحمية جزيرة صير بنياس إضافة إلى إطلاق مشاريع استصلاح الأراضي والري وإقامة العديد من المشاريع الزراعية في مختلف أنحاء الإمارات كما قام بدعم البحث العلمي في مجال البيئة من خلال إنشاء العديد من المؤسسات البحثية مثل مركز الشيخ زايد للدراسات والبحوث البيئية لقد كان الجهود الشيخ زايد بن سلطان رحمه الله أثر كبير على البيئة فقد ساهمت هذه الجهود في حماية البيئة وتعزيز الاستدامة كما ساهمت في نشر الوعي البيئي وتغيير السلوكات البيئية في المجتمع وعلى المستوى الدولي كان الشيخ زايد رحمه الله من أبرز الداعمين لقضايا البيئة كما ساهم في إنشاء العديد من مؤسسات البيئة الدولية مثل مؤسسة زايد الدولية البيئة التي نحن ننتمي إليها لقد كان الشيخ زايد رحمه الله يحتذى به في القيادة البيئة فقد كانت لديه رؤية واضحة لأهمية حماية البيئة وقد عمل على تحقيق هذه الرؤية من خلال مجموعة من المبادرات والمشاريع التي أثرت بشكل كبير على البيئة من ناحية أخرى يعد استشراف المستقبل أحد أهم المهارات التي يمتلكها القادة والمسؤولون حيث يساعدون من اتخاذ القرار المناسب في الوقت المناسب ومواجهة التحديات المحتملة وقد كان استشراف المستقبل من أهم ركائز فكر الشيخ زايد 
حيث كان دائما ينظر المستقبل لتفاؤل وامل ويسعى الى بناء دوله الامارات على اسس متينه تلبي احتياجات الاجيال الحاضره واجيال المستقبل. كان يؤمن بالمستقبل وينظر اليه باعتباره فرصه للبناء وقد عبر عن هذا الايمان في العديد من اقواله كما كما قام رحمه الله في تاسيس دوله الامارات وتطوير البنيه التحتيه والاستثمار في التعليم والصحه والتركيز على مبادئ ومفاهيم التنميه المستدامه. كان الشيخ زايد يدرك ان المستقبل يحمل معه تحديات لكنه كان يؤمن بقدره ابناء الامارات على مواجهتها وقد تمثل ذلك في العديد من القرارات التي اتخذها في الوقت المناسب ومنها الاستثمار في البحث العلمي والتطوير وبناء علاقات دوليه وشبكه قويه من دعم العمل الانساني والتضامن الدولي. تقوم القياده في فكر الشيخ زايد على مجموعه من القيم الاساسيه تقوم على الانسانيه فقد كان قائدا انسانيا يؤمن بقيمه الانسان وكرامته ويسعى لتحقيق رفاهيته وتنميه قدراته كان يؤمن بالحكمه فقد كان حكيما يملك رؤيه واضحه للمستقبل ويعرف كيف يتعامل مع التحديات والمشكلات العدل كان زايد قائدا عادلا يسعى الى تحقيق العداله الاجتماعيه بين جميع افراد المجتمع كان محبا للسلام وساعين الى السلام والتعاون بين مختلف الشعوب تجسدت القياده في فكر الشيخ زايد في العديد من التطبيقات منها تاسيس دوله الامارات العربيه المتحده وبناء الانسان الاماراتي حيث كان حريصا على بناء الانسان فانشا العديد من المؤسسات التعليميه والصحيه والاجتماعيه لتوفير افضل فرص المواطنين اضافه للتنميه الاقتصاديه حيث كان قائدا اقتصاديا ناجحا استطاع ان يقود الامارات الى تحقيق نهضه اقتصاديه كبرى بالاضافه للسياسه الخارجيه فقد كان قائدا عالميا يسعى الى تحقيق السلام والتعاون بين مختلف الدول. ختاما لقد ترك الشيخ زايد ارضا ارثا عظيما في مجال القياده حيث يعد نموذجا نموذجا يحتذى به للزعماء والقاده في جميع انحاء العالم. ويتمثل هذا الارث في القيم الانسانيه والحكمه والعدل والسلام التي كان يؤمن بها والتي جسدها في حياته وانجازاته. ونحن اذ نتحدث هنا في مؤسسه زايد دولي البيئه ونستعرض الانجازات التي قامت بها المؤسسه خلال ال 20 سنه الماضيه فانا نفخر بان نحمل اسم هذا القائد العظيم ورحمه الله والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hamdan. Uh, can I please uh, thank you for taking us to the past uh, and uh, talking about the legacy of the late Sheikh Zayed and linking it to the present and giving us hope for the future. So uh, our uh, next, uh, we will go with Dr. Isa, our senior advisor, to talk more about promoting sustainable living. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, talking about the uh, legacy of uh, Sheikh Zaid, uh, peace be upon his soul, and talking about the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment, it is actually a story of an outstanding leader honoring a unique leader. It is the Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum honoring the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan, and both of them are unique and outstanding leaders of the UAE. The Zayed International Foundation for the Environment was founded to really help or contribute worldwide to the uh, promotion of sustainable development and the protection of the environment. How? There were three, three courses to go along to achieve this. The first one is to award and to recognize and honor the outstanding environmental achievements. And for this, the foundation has two awards two prizes, the Zaid International Prize for the Environment and the Emirates Appreciation Award. The, 
the Zaid International Prize for the Environment actually recognized and rewarded champions of the world uh, since 1999 and until uh, today is recognizing all uh, outstanding achievements of the environment. The uh, uh, organizing uh, local, regional, and international conferences, workshops, and seminar is another method which will actually help the world by providing scientific information and by providing uh, uh, dialogues among the different groups of people and different countries in order to uh, promote the uh, sustainable development and environmental protection. The third one, uh, the second one is actually by publishing, uh, which provides information. We published uh, a magazine, a monthly magazine, and also a book series, a uh, quarterly book series. And the, both of them are actually providing information, scientific information reference for uh, researchers, for students, and for decision makers. Raising environmental awareness also through campaigns, public lectures, publications, and information material has been going on since 1999 among schools, universities, and uh, different communities in the UAE and outside of the UAE as well. This is the Zaid International Prize for the Environment, which actually recognized and awarded uh, icons of environmental work worldwide. And in the first cycle, it was awarded to President Jimmy Carter, USA, for his uh, vision and, and for his uh, initiative, which was called the uh, 2001 Initiative. Now, the uh, British Broadcasting Corporation was also honored in the second cycle for being, you know, the most uh, prominent uh, broadcasting organization in the field of the environment and also for sustainability of their uh, publishing of the uh, uh, environmental work worldwide and environmental news as well. In the third cycle, uh, Kofi Annan, uh, the former UN Secretary General, was also honored uh, for his work as a UN Secretary General and as a leader in his country and in Africa in general. In the fourth cycle, 2008, Groharm Brotland the former prime minister of Norway, who headed the Environment and Development Committee, which produced the uh, report of our common future, was also honored. And this is also an, an icon, and the person who is a prominent person in the, uh, in the leadership of environment. In the fifth cycle, uh, the president of uh, South Korea, was also uh, honored here, President Lee myong Bak, for bringing up the green economy in his country and also developing all uh, kinds of green technologies uh, in his country. Uh, the sixth cycle, uh, His uh, Royal Highness Prince uh, Albert II of Monaco was also honored for his foundation. He has a foundation which really achieved a lot in terms of environment. So these are actually uh, environmental leaders who actually uh, left their uh, footprints um, in terms of the environmental uh, achievements in their countries and worldwide. This was for the uh, leadership for the environment was category one of the prize. The second category was the Scientific and Technological Achievements Award, which was awarded in the first cycle to uh, Professor Mohammed al Qassas of Egypt. Uh, this uh, professor was really a leader in studying desertification 
uh, and also finding solutions for the problems of uh, uh, drought and desertification in uh, Africa and also worldwide. Uh, World Commission on Dams uh, shared this uh, award with uh, Professor Mohammed Al Qassas, and this commission was actually uh, uh, commissioned by the uh, United Nations to study the environmental impact of dams, and they produced uh, an, an incredible report which really showed how dams, uh, how careful do we have to be in building dang, dams in order not to damage our environment. In the second cycle, there were three professors who were honored and awarded the Zaid International Prize for the Environment, and these professors are the ones who actually started this uh, IPCC, which is the International Panel uh, for Climate Change. And they, they were really pioneers. Uh, uh, Professor Godwin Obasi of Nigeria, and uh, Professor Mustafa Tolba, and Professor Bert Bolin of Sweden. In the third cycle, the uh, Millennium Ecosystem Assessment uh, International uh, was uh, awarded because this was a report uh, which was really so helpful in uh, setting the, 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 the roadmap for uh, trying to deal with uh, uh, big problems like climate change and uh, uh, desertification and uh, loss of biodiversity in the environment. Now, uh, in the fourth cycle, there was uh, Two professors, Jane Lobyshenko uh, is also the one who later, after getting the prize, the Zeit Prize, she was appointed by the U US president as a uh, head of NOAA, which is a National Oceanographic Authority of the United States of America. And Professor V. Ramanasan, Ramanasan is the one who actually coined the gases the, what we call now the, the, the global warming gases. And he was a pioneer in uh, pointing to the fact that the uh, accumulation of these gases in the atmosphere will create uh, environmental problems. Uh, in the fifth cycle, we had Sir Partha uh, Dasgupta, uh, is, is uh, of Indian origin in uh, UK citizen. And in the sixth cycle, we had Ashok Kholsa and Zachary Abdul Hamid. These are professors, actually the three of them, uh, who actually have outstanding research uh, leading to uh, uh, methods for uh, dealing with environmental, serious environmental problems. Now, the third category of the Zaid International Prize for the Environment was the category of environmental action with positive impact on society. And in the first cycle, uh, Ms. Yolanda Kakabatsi, uh, who was the, um, uh, the uh, Environment Minister in, of Ecuador, and later she became also the head of the IUCN. Uh, she was uh, one of the uh, uh, leaders who actually wrote the, uh, uh, the, the youth chapter of the, uh, our common future. And also, Stefan schmidt heine is uh, uh, a leading uh, businessman from Switzerland who actually uh, participated or contributed uh, as a leader to what we call the International Council for Business and Sustainable Development. Now, in the uh, third cycle, there was Angela Cropper from Trinidad and Tobago, and Professor Emil Salim from Indonesia. And you can see that the prize is given to people from all regions of the world. And these are professors who really uh, did great work in environmental uh, uh, management. The fourth cycle, the Environment Development Action in the Third World of Senegal. This is an NGO who actually was awarded the, uh, the prize. In the fifth cycle, 
Mr. Najib Saab and Mr. Mathis uh, Wakren, uh, Wakrenegal uh, of Switzerland, and these are also two people who are working mainly in the media to promote uh, environmental protection and sustainable development. And in the sixth cycle, there was Luke Hoffman and Paula uh, Caballero uh, Gomez from Colombia and from Switzerland. And these are also two of the people who promoted NGOs, promoted actually social uh, work in terms of environmental uh, sustainability. The Zaid International uh, Foundation for the Environment actually organized uh, so many uh, international activities and, and uh, were attended by really uh, figures, uh, real figures of, uh, of the world. Uh, five heads of states actually attended the uh, activities of the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment and two former presidents and in, in addition to a UN Secretary General and 190 ministers from 112 countries actually attended and participated in the activities of the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment. And the contribution to development of global and local policy was one of the uh, most important results or outcome of these activities or these conferences and, uh, and, and workshops. And also the international activities included conferences on desertification, water resources, atmospheric pollution, chemicals management, renewable energy, green buildings. And uh, also the Zaid International Foundation hosted the UNEP Governing Council uh, and the Desert Festival uh, these are two uh, important organizations. The, U the UNEP, you know, a governing council is every uh, a few years is, is run. And the uh, Deserts Festival is run by the Deserts Foundation. And our chairman, Professor Mohammed bin Fahad, is actually the deputy chairman of the Deserts Foundation. Then regional implementation of Rio 20 outcome. This was a workshop, a very important workshop, uh, held here um, with ESQUA to, uh, to, uh, to generalize the uh, results of the Rio plus 20 outcome. And participation in important global meetings and events, uh, the, the Zaid Foundation has participated in many. Then also the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment has a second award, another award, which is local. And this is the uh, Emirates Appreciation Award for the Environment, uh, united in ambition and determination to realize sustainable development. This was really uh, founded also by uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and uh, Prime Minister, ruler of Dubai, in order to actually, uh, in, in vision of the, 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 the UAE Vision 2021, which was launched at that time by uh, the late His Highness Sheikh uh, Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, who was President, the, he launched the UAE Vision 2021 and after that, the uh, Zaid International Foundation for the Environment then launched this award in order to help uh, uh, amalgamate the uh, environmental work in all the economic and social work in the UAE. It was established under the vision of highly competitive endeavors to achieve sustainable development in UAE and as a mission to recognize and encourage initiatives and projects that contribute to achieving UAE green development strategy. The green development strategy was actually launched by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum uh, at that time. Also to recognize and promote pioneering contributions in the field of the environment and sustainable development across all sectors of the society in the UAE and to support and encourage individuals and collective national environmental initiatives that will contribute to the sustainability of activities and research and action. Uh, to highlight initiatives and achievements of industrial 
and services enterprises, which are committed to environmental standards and contribute to the promotion of a culture of sustainable living. As you could see from the beginning, we say uh, the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment is promoting sustainable living, which is a bit more than sustainable development. If you want people themselves to be living this sustainability uh, instead of just thinking that sustainable development is uh, economic or uh, social. Uh, to raise environmental awareness across all sectors of the UAE society as different industrial and different um, economic sectors uh, are awarded, then they will uh, spread the message uh, of environmental sustainability more. Now, the, the winners of this, um, the award actually was uh, uh, divided into environmental personality and industrial enterprises, large industries and small medium industries, and educational institutions, university and institutes, uh, versus also schools, innovation, invention, and environmental research, uh, which is also divided into applied research and innovation, and media and environmental awareness. And this is a very important part because without media, without spreading the message, uh, everything will stay uh, on the shelves and go nowhere. Okay. So uh, it was very important to, uh, uh, to, to recognize and award uh, also the uh, important and outstanding work in the media, whether it is in the mass media or in uh, organizations who have good media departments. The uh, winners of the MRS Appreciation Award included uh, in the first cycle, uh, His Excellency, uh, Lieutenant General Dahi Khalfan Tamim, uh, who was at that time the uh, Commander General of uh, Dubai Police, and Dubai Police had so many uh, environmental initiatives, uh, and, and actually it was the uh, uh, organization which, uh, which was the, the main supporter of the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment, and also had so many, uh, uh, it has actually, the only, the only police department maybe which has a, a, an environment and energy department. And uh, this was for the Environmental Personality Award. For the industrial enterprise, and uh, in the first cycle, there was the Abu Dhabi Marine Operations Company, ADMA, which also has a very strong environment department that is trying to uh, mitigate and, uh, and actually offset uh, the impact of the uh, oil industry. And in the third, uh, in the, um, the third category, which is a sustainable school program, and the Abu Dhabi Education Council, they uh, won the uh, uh, award in the first cycle from the education. Dubai Electricity and Water also has a very strong environment department, uh, which actually uh, won the uh, award and the Sharjah Environment and Protected Areas Authority. They have so many programs for promoting sustainable development. Sharjah uh, Environment and Protected Areas Authority is also um, a an, an, an really old uh, or, uh, foundation, which was founded by uh, His Highness uh, uh, Sheikh Sultan Al-Qasimi. Uh, the, the last award was actually awarded to uh, a teacher, one of the teachers, in order to encourage teachers to promote environmental education, and also Ras Al Khaimah Education Zone, which was really uh, more active uh, than others in terms of uh, environmental education. In the second cycle, this was uh, the Environmental Personality Award was given to uh, Mr. Mohammed Ahmed Al Bawardi, His Excellency, who later also became a, a Minister uh, of State, and he was actually one of the founders of the uh, Abu Dhabi uh, Environment Agency. Uh, Emirates uh, Global uh, Aluminium, uh, Dobal, here in Dubai. Uh, 
which was also promoting environmental protection and sustainability, and they have uh, very strict uh, rules in, in their uh, uh, industry and the, in the campus. Uh, they are to uh, make sure that they have uh, less footprint or a smaller footprint uh, on the environment. Uh, Ethin Primary School for Girls, Ras Al Khema, uh, was awarded this. And, and awarding schools is very important because then schools can compete among each other for uh, environmental uh, awareness. And the British University in Dubai uh, also uh, won the award. The UAE National Center of Meteorology and Seismology uh, awarded this for the uh, cloud seeding program, which was, uh, 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 as they explained, how they try to also have a, a smaller footprint for uh, the cloud seeding. Sharjah Media Corporation was very active and they actually uh, uh, hosted so many environment programs and uh, the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment itself was uh, a guest in many programs. And Mr. Ahmed Musabbah al Nuaymi is a teacher also like Azza and uh, Al Tawfiq School, so teacher school. Uh, the, the, the foundation, the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment tried always to concentrate or focus on this level of the society, which is the uh, pupils of the primary schools who are very important for the future of environmental award. The publications include the monthly magazine, Society and Environment, and the quarterly book series, World of the Environment, Alam al uh, the writing of specialists to non-specialists. Uh, so we, uh, the, the foundation is trying to get people who are specialized, who are experts, to write for people who are not specialized in the field, like decision makers, like uh, uh, teachers, like uh, students, and the general public in, in a language which is really simple so that they can understand. Then the international conferences, seminars, workshops, and webinars, and public lectures. In, after the corona era, uh, the, the foundation started to do webinars online and, 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 and did many actually of them, and they were very popular because in online, you will have more people actually interested all over the world, they can participate, and you can also uh, get uh, experts from anywhere in the world to come and speak in your webinar. Uh, in addition to the school visits, we have so many school visits and distributing the publications and also giving them public lectures. And then campaigns like cleaning uh, the, the shore, or like um, planting trees and so many campaigns like this. The uh, Zaid International Foundation for the Environment also believes in partnerships and collaboration. And this is actually one of the uh, uh, sustainable development goals is to promote partnerships and collaboration. And the, the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment has been doing this all along since 1999. Now, what is the important message that the Zaid International Foundation would like to pass here in the COP28? That if you go back to all uh, 27 years, you will find that the, the focus is always on technology, on how to get green energy, green cars, green economy, green, and so on. And, and this is all related to uh, inventions and innovations, new, which depend on hardware and software, okay? Now, the Zaid International Foundation for the Environment has this initiative for now three years or more, trying to promote the initiative of human wear. You, you, you will go for hardware and software, but 
also go for human wear at the same time because a human being is also one of the important tools to uh, implement the sustainable development goals and to reach sustainability and to reduce emissions because emissions are related to consumption and if you can convince people and raise their awareness to reduce consumption, then you are reducing emissions uh, automatically. But uh, otherwise, if you, if, you, if you depend only on technology, then you will always have the, uh, a, a big part of the uh, world population out of the picture uh, as it, is, uh, it has been happening in the last uh, 27 years. So, the UN is funding climate action, all right? There is a fund for that. Then that fund is mainly going for these innovations and uh, technologies. Now, the Zaid International Foundation is asking for also directing funds, enough funds, to raise uh, awareness and to promote environmental education uh, for funding and action plans will give much better results on the long run because emissions are directly related to human consumption. The Zaid International Foundation for the Environment is promoting sustainable development goals. And thank you for listening. Much. Thank you so much, Dr. Isa, for presenting especially the last message about the human wear. I think that's a special topic that not everyone tackles, especially in a context of focusing on materialism, consumerism, and all the isms. Uh, so without further ado, I want to uh, welcome to the stage Dr. Charles, our senior advisor, to talk about uh, philosophic leadership and how it's leading us towards uh, a better future. Please uh, come Thank to you. the stage, Dr. Charles. Thank you. Thank you. I have, I have this. OK. I'm going to pick up on the human wear and say, how is it that someone born in Hawaii as a Christian has come and found himself so welcome and so inspired in this community here. It's remarkable. I was invited first to the UAE in 2002 to speak at the Evolving Arabian Knowledge Economy Association. And then I came in 2004 and uh, for a conference uh, for the um, IFTD, was the conference? Yeah, and somehow I've been touched by this. Um, that's led to my doing workshops in Saudi Arabia for the Saudi Aramco, spending six years teaching in Dar al Hekma in Jeddah. Now, I'm saying this because human wear is our growth inside. And so often we look at the outside world to tell people what to do and what's going on. But at this point in history, it's what happens inside us that makes the difference. And that means a humble awareness to one another and letting other people inspire us. And I've been profoundly inspired by Americans like James Hansen, uh, Thomas Berry, um, Elizabeth Colbert, who wrote the book, The Sixth Extinction, which is a warning to us all we need to grow up and find more within ourselves. Um, do you have the, I'm just gonna very, uh, uh, okay. I'm gonna raise some concepts that perhaps are not so normal. Do any of you use the word, you use the word learning, maybe knowledgeing? Who uses the word wisdoming? Anybody? What if that became the word of the year? And what do I mean by that? We think of a wise person that has gray hair, forget it, I can guarantee that doesn't give you anything. I think the really humble person is someone who knows his or her ignorance. 
And in knowing his or her ignorance, he or she reaches out and says, tell me more, what's going on? And in the conversation, everybody develops. So to me, I'm really beginning to say, as leaders, how do we develop the art of joyous wisdom and find the richness in life? The second is I realized that we simply say, do a good life now and you'll have something after death. My question is, is there life after birth? And how do we help one another grow over time? And wonderful about the awards that the foundation has been giving, but how do we interact daily with one another, our associates, our peers, our subordinates? And when I was working with Digital Equipment Corporation, our marketing department asked me to come in because there was all kinds of conflicts. And I realized that they were always putting down one, one another, competitive, I'm better than you, why do you do that stupid thing? And it was very destructive. So I said, do we have a word that talks about that destruction, that put down? And somehow I came on the word zinger, which stings. What would a zinger be in Arabic? What's, when somebody says something to you and you basically inside say, ouch, that wasn't fair. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah, too often, right? So why is it that we put down people by race, gender, age, and so forth? We do too much zingers and we sometimes weaponize them, unfortunately. What is it when we lift people up? And I said, what's the word for that? And I said, let's call it winger. And now, as thinking about it, when I talk to you, I say, what can I say that gives you a feeling of being lifted up? And you take everybody much more seriously, and the joy of life comes out. And that, that, what, what it is, it's not leader is telling people what to do, but leader as being totally present and enjoying the interaction and getting something out of it in every way possible. So basically, I'm um, going to go through this. We want to keep things, things simple, clear, well-defined. When they're not, we get worried. And that's the dilemma. This slide here is why we haven't made progress significantly after 28 copes. We are holding on to the idea that life is wellness and we should have our goodies. When we move into the realization that life is turbulent, unclear, ambiguous, and so forth, and are ready for that because we understand the joy of wisdoming, it's a whole different world. Now, I couldn't have said this to you two weeks ago. I have begin, been actively putting together things that I've been thinking on for a long time. And it's lucky I'm so young. Um, I don't know if you do it, but I do it. There's no law against you have to add a year when you have your birthday. So I've been adding it, and I'm probably about 26. It really is nice. OK. Um, and the second thing is, we are always telling, how could we shift to asking? And here our little friend Einstein said, if I had a big problem and I had an hour, I'd spend the first 55 minutes. I would love a cope to ask the world the toughest questions possible and give them a year to reflect on it and then come together. And if it were possible, I'd say, go to Taif and do a suit okaz and somehow Bring the poetry, the music, the sensitivity of life together. Somehow, that could be leadership. So this is what we want to do, but we're not going to get there unless we really work on the inside. And that's the uh, 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 inner development goals. I have a friend in Bombay that wrote a book called Western Windows, Eastern Doors. We look out as objects in the West, we measure them, we study them, and so forth. But unless we go in, we don't make it. So that's where we need to go. 
And it's a matter of perspective. That's why I say the real energy crisis is a consciousness crisis. And getting the right perspective. If I asked you how many dimensions does reality have, if we take space as three, that way, this way, and up, there's three dimensions of space. How many dimensions of time do we have? Anybody guess? One? Yeah, con conventional one. So here in art, we went from 2D to 3D. Here in space and time, thanks to Einstein, we went for 3D and 1D of time. Could it be that the mistake is that we saw time just as the present? We don't understand how the past flows with us or the future. And so that is my passion to find out three-dimensional time. Um, here, he helped us um, understand the dynamics of light a thousand years ago in Cairo. How can we understand the dynamics of insight? So that's what I'd like to do. Prometheus's myth, his brother to, to punish Prometheus was given a woman and a box. He shouldn't have taken it. He didn't think and short-sightedness is the curse even today. So out of that box is coming the evil, so the only thing in there is hope. And the last thing I'll, I'll point out is that he was asked to give each person or uh, all of the living creatures their characteristics. And when he got past all the animals to humans, he, for, he didn't have anything more. So we've never known our characteristics. And we, if we understood how rich we are inside, life would be profoundly different. And this is the transition to a inner awareness that makes the joy of wisdoming possible. And the fact that I can say it in your context with, with you and I feel the closeness with you folks, that could be the breakthrough that helps us out of the crisis today. So a humble thanks to all of you for this. So much, thank you so much, Dr. Charles. It's uh, music to our ears to listen to uh, the wisdom and process that you give us. Last but not least, the closing remarks will be given by our chairman, Dr. Mohammed bin Fahd. وأخيراً وليس آخراً the closing remarks. الكلمة الأخيرة ستكون لدكتور محمد بن فهد. بل يتفضل مشكور. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وسعد الله مساحكم في هذا اليوم الجميل حقيقة وهذه الأيام الجميلة. Sometimes in English, sometimes in Arabic. What can I do? Who did not learn Arabic up to now? So that is their problem. For the last one week, I was writing this booklet. Then Professor Hamdan Ashar took one third of the information. Then I said, okay. Then came Dr. Isa, and he took one third. Then the philosophy, the philosophy side taken by Professor Charles. So I, I was uh, marking with this pen. Then I left only with small things like this point. <laughs> it's an, a, a grateful event what we are experiencing in United Arab Emirates. Always. Not repeatable. Maybe the names are repeated, but the standard is very high and the concern is huge. And the points have been thrown for, from the last week up to the end. Actually, it's, it needs it need hard work for the humanity anywhere. A lot of efforts have been done by Salama Center. And I, that, uh, I respect that the effort have been done over one year or two years. And also the other departments, the environment, uh, uh, ministry, and all 
the people actually they have been working hard more than 18, 20 hours daily sometimes. Now, I have questions and they have to answer. Let's see, and there's a prize. What he put, Dr. Isa, I will select now and we will offer for, for the second. I need to ask that he put about Sheikh Zaid and Sheikh Rashid, about their establishment of United Arab Emirates, but from which school they graduated? No, I need to, somebody answer this very difficult question. From which school they graduated? And with what degree? What have been, what type of the degree have been honored to receive? No answer. We know their history. We know their achievement. As Professor Hamdan mentioned. An outstanding all around the world. Before anybody knows when Professor Paul Streeton from the World Bank and uh, uh, Martin Luther King and uh, we will give some examples. Five minutes, what can I do? That is not, I throw all the information. I have to give only in short. Before we hear, he, Dr. Raisa, he mentioned about sustainability and sustainable life. But these people, they put it in a blender of juice and became a unique uh, uh, theory. Who heard in the 19, in the 60s about the basic needs approach? Nobody. Or what is the basic needs approach that time? Even the theory not exist. But these leaders, Sheikh Zaid and Sheikh Rashid, they are, they are con considered five things to be clean water, the food, the shelter, the schooling, and the medicine. The shelter will, with the housing, everything. This is the principles of the theory, a big theory. From the 60s, before the oil, before the, all these things, what we are saying now is nothing. They had not experienced that time. And they create this phenomena, which is, exists now in real life. Then, before they pass away, and the Federation of United Arab Emirates, now, if you will consider UAE, Anybody have been left in the paradise in, pa in any time of his life? Anybody experienced the living in paradise? No. Inshallah, in the day after. But we can imagine the prophets in Islam, in Christianity, in Jewish, there is about the paradise, how it looks, how this, you have to imagine. But if you need to test something, and to lift something very close, you have to come to United Arab Emirates. Why? These two leaders, they draw a map, the openness to the world. If countries will be born in the future, they are citizens of them in United Arab Emirates. That the openness to the world, to, to the world brought a lot of information, a lot of experience, a lot of learning. They learned from us and we learned from this. For this reason, when I had said, if there is a paradise from the whole planet, it exists in UAE, developed. In short time, 50 years, the countries have been developed. Developed by whom? By the whole world. Freedom for the people to come and to stay and to, um, uh, they have the full freedom to produce and to be in trading and education. I think that will give them the uh, freedom to produce unique things. You will not find it 
People, they are talking about so many things in theory, but in practice, UAE. And that's the main concern of the environment. Greening, atmosphere, the carbon brand, and all these things is happening. But, actually, one hour I put, I, I plan for one hour to give, but what can I do? I have to close. They are saying to me, cross, cross, what can I do? <laughs> At the end, as you be opening the societies to merge together, you will get sustainable living and sustainability in all the components. You will have, you will have a safe societies. No complete work. We are, we are working and modifying if there are some obstacles, if there are some negative effects. But at the end, we assure that with a clear feeling that for the benefit of the humans. Uh, unfortunately, sorry that I did not get the time enough, but uh, uh, five minutes, that's to throw some point for thought. Some point for thought. If somebody got a new idea, he can also, through Zaid Foundation, visit us. We will cooperate together. Thanks a lot, and have a nice day. That's, this is not a, a academic talks or something. This is only uh, a point.